Respected Chairman, sir, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2021. The title of my presentation today is A Double Tap in Left Main Trifurcation, Triumphs and Tribulations. So this is my patient, a 65-year-old gentleman with an anterior wall MI one year back who underwent a primary angioplasty with a stent to the proximal LED. And now he presents with effort angina. So if you see there's a lesion in the left main extending into the circumflex, ramus, and the LAD. It's a Medina 1111. The right coronary is normal. So to plant this angioplasty, we first did an OCT. And this is what the OCT showed us. The stent in the proximal LAD was underdeployed. And if you look at the area of confluence, there is a ruptured plaque there, which is healed with an area of 2.3 millimeter square. The left main had a calcific nodule with an area of 4.2 millimeter square. The 3D gave us a very important point, and that is the ostia of the circumflex and the ramus was a single ostia. And that was an important point. So for the bifurcation planning, the physiology showed us that the lesion in the left main was significant. It was 0.74 with IV adenosine. With the OCT, we got this information on the side branch that was a single ostia. We got the morphology length diameter decided. So what are the options we have? The simple option is to just go into an LM crossover or to do a crossover and kiss or to do a tap, a trifurcation tap a double T with a tracing. Now, what's a tracing? Now, according to the dictionary, a tracing is to kiss two other people at once or a three-person kiss. And that's what we thought we would do. So we started off with the left main LED stent. We put a 3.533. We did a pot with a 4.5. And the result looked good. So we removed the jailed wire from the circumflex and the ramus, recrossed the circumflex and kissed it, sequentially recrossed the ramus and kissed it, and finally we did the tracing. So here we recrossed the circumflex with the balloon, and then we kissed that. Then we recrossed the ramus, and we kissed that with the left main, and then finally we do this tracing with three balloons one to the left pane to the LED, to the circumflex, and to the rings. But after this, we were not too happy with the result, as you can see over here. The lesion in the circumflex and the ramus remains. So we did an OCT at this point. And this is what the OCT showed. The 3D showed us there was a strut across the side branch ostium. Actually, you can see all the three wires here, the one wire going into the circumflex, the second wire going into the ramus, and this is the wire into the LAD. Somehow not satisfied with this result, we decided we got to do a double tap. So now this is the double tap, the stent in the circumflex and a stent into the ramus, deployed that, and again did the tracing. The result looks, looked good. And uh, I guess you would agree with me that the result looks good. And we thought we we're going to finish it off with a pot. So we did the pot. The final result looked quite satisfying. And we thought we were going to come out with a final OCT. And uh, this is what the OCT showed us. It's quite a surprise to us because if you realize, there's thrombus everywhere, and that's quite acutely. Right at the area of confluence, extensive thrombus. Into the left main, again, extensive thrombus. And uh, the 3D looks full of thrombus at the, at, the, at the trifurcation point. The patient was clinically stable at this point of time, so we checked the ACT, and that was 340. But again, we gave heparin. The patient was on Plavix. So we changed it to Ticagrelor, and we loaded him with 180 milligrams. We gave him thyrofiban infusion, and now we kissed again. 
But we, we just did a kissing now. The left main and the circumflex. And as a result, we got patient remained stable. So we did another OCT. And thankfully, the thrombus is still there, but definitely less. And uh, that's how the 3D looks. The ostium, the circumflex is open, the other ostium is full of thrombus. But because the patient remains stable, we continued the tyrofiban infusion and shifted him to the CC. The next day, we took him back. Angio looked pretty decent. And we thought we were going to do another OCT at this point of time. So we did another OCT. And uh, happy to note that the thrombus is much, much less. But it's still there. You can see the struts here of the tap. And this is what the 3D shows. You can see the struts of both the stents in the ostium. But since he remains stable, we decided that we're just going to continue him on aspirin and tachycolor and discharge him. And everything seemed good. We got the results of the clopidogrel genotyping, and it showed that he was an intermediate metabolizer. So we continued him on tachycolor. However, two years later, he came back. Now it's class two symptoms, and uh, this is what the angio shows. We have got an ISR that's involving the ramus ostium and the circumflex. So what do you do at this point? We decided we're going to do another OCT. Now this is what the OCT showed us. If you look at this view over here, you can see a lot of ingrowth into these struts and This is how it looks at the area of confluence. A lot of neointimal growth at the strut, and the 3D shows neointimal growth. The entire ostia is divided into two particular ostia. So the take home from this is that trifurcation is a messy affair. You must use the minimal number of stents if feasible. There should be a low threshold for CABG, and an imaging is absolutely mandatory. Ticagrelor is always preferable because clopidogrel resistance is a reality. A routine PRU measurement should be done and know when to stop. And like in this case, I think a femoral approach makes life easy. Thank you all for your kind attention.